Shrimp. Shrimp cake. Shrimp crackers. Shrimp cocktail. Shrimp sushi. Shrimp chimchurri. Battered shrimp bubba gump shrimp. Slavery to make shrimp. Wait. What? Now, a startling expose about slave oh, Thailand's labor. Thailand's multi-billion dollar seafood the industry. The practice in the Thai fishing industry. Was the fish you ate caught by a slave? I've had shrimp. You've probably had shrimp. But do you know where shrimp comes from? I don't know either. Uh... But I do want to know! Is it the supermarket? The vending machine? The same factory where they make shrimp crackers? A blessing from the gods? To find out, I decided to trace the supply. The plan was to literally follow the shrimp. Where the shrimp went, we went. From where we found it, we'll walk or take the subway or something, and then we go from there and... Uh, I don't know. But uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of the plan. Um, <laughs> no plan. <laughs> so... Uh... To begin, we first went to the place where we last saw shrimp. The market. For this mission, I brought along my friend Mac to help investigate. Mac does not eat shrimp. By the way, everyone's wearing a face mask because at the time we were filming, there's been this global pandemic going on. Okay, here we are. So we walked around and tried to speak to anyone sitting behind uh, a heap of shrimp and just asked them where it came from. <laughs> As it turns out, shrimp are not born in some sort of hidden sanctuary behind a supermarket. They don't even come from the sea. This has all been one big lie. <laughs> so shrimp are farmed, but it's not that simple. In one shrimp life cycle, they might be born in a hatchery, transferred to a nursery, matured in an intensive or extensive farm, peeled in a factory, and it's a lot before it gets to our plates. And so we really wanted to see this journey for ourselves. For this, we brought along our other friend Poom, who is also allergic to shrimp. I could not have picked better company for this trip. So after speaking to all the market vendors, we had a vague idea of where the shrimp farms were. Mostly, either the vendors go pick it up from the farm themselves, or the trucks come deliver them at the market. But then, I remembered. The internet, the internet has had all the answers. So I posted on Facebook asking if anyone owned a shrimp farm or knew anyone who did. And living up to its name, this God-gifted platform did connect us together. In 20 minutes, one of my good university seniors texted me offering to refer me to the farm in Shasheng Sao. So with the help of Poom and Google Maps, in two hours, we arrived to the shrimp nursery the daycare of the shrimp world. You've arrived at your destination. Yeah. What happened to him? We can only film outside. At first he said, you might want to film outside the gate. Oh. And I'm like, um, since outside. we're here, can we just film other stuff as well? So anything that is not shrimp related, we can we film. Can film. <laughs> yeah. Great trip to the shrimp farm. This is the outside. <laughs> Look at these lovely cactuses. Great cars. <laughs> cactus. Cacti. Cactus. Cacti. Until next time. <laughs> the shrimp industry has suffered years of really bad PR. For good reason. But after all that controversy, no one is really so willing to give people with cameras the benefit of the doubt. Eventually, we just gave up on finding any shrimp nurseries. Um, we, we just resorted to finding any hole in the ground that maybe shrimp might live in. And for this, we look to our best source of intel. A tool that can actually give you proper directions unlike most people. Google Maps. So the map showed us these rectangular shapes from the satellite, which we figured were probably shrimp farms. 
and with the wisdom of Max Index Finger, we headed to wherever we could find the most rectangles in one location. Along the way, we also asked people we drove past in case they knew anything. This woman said the pandemic has hit business pretty hard and so people eat less shrimp now and so we won't really find much. Then she told us to drive that way. This one handed Poom the phone to speak to the farm owner, who then just hung up. Then we drove down this road and found this guy who said we came the wrong way. This is someone's house. Yeah, eventually Mac said that we should probably go to the temple. Why not? I mean, we're lost and, and monks give the best advice to people who are lost. So we not, did not get access to a shrimp farm, but we did get access to a temple near a shrimp farm. Like right next to a shrimp farm. <laughs> and so we met this monk and asked him if he knew anything about the shrimp farm next door, to which he told us, that's not a shrimp farm. That's a fish pond. And so we asked him if he knew anything about shrimp farming in the area. And he said he did not know anything about shrimp farming. He only knew about shrimp eating. So after the temple, we felt even more lost than before. At this point, we're pretty much ready to just give up and go home. As, as we were driving, we saw this lady selling mangoes on the roadside. And yeah, we, we decided to stop because uh, why not? Mangoes are great. <laughs> With our last remaining bit of hope, we decided to ask her. She turned around and she pointed behind and she's like, that's my shrimp farm. And the universe has spoken. <gasps> Pilan and her family have lived on this land for 20 years, and she pays her landlord about 250 baht per month, which is about 9 US dollars. And yet, after all of this time, the landlord still won't let them build any permanent structures. And so Pilan and her family live in a cabin made of palm fronds. Just like Pilan, a lot of people wanted to get rich off of shrimp farming. And many promises were made by governments and by development agencies. But in a lot of cases, people were left worse off with very little money and degraded landscapes. And so it happens that the land once filled with mangrove forests is now full of discarded shrimp ponds. Are we here? Is this where shrimp were born? Are we done? So these are the ponds where shrimp are matured. The ponds that were supposed to be a lifeline out of poverty. But shrimp babies just can't survive this type of harsh environment. And so people like Pilan have to buy their shrimp from nurseries who buy their shrimp from hatcheries, adding to their overall cost. Luckily, we found someone who was happy to walk us through her hatchery. This is Pikai, the shrimp farm owner. Not so long ago, shrimp brood used to come from the ocean as it was impossible to get shrimp to breed in captivity. But with technological advancement, hatcheries like this have gotten the shrimp breeding process down to a science. And what was once in the oceans is now in this highly controlled indoor environment. Something we found out though was that um, female shrimp have these hormonal glands behind their eyes. They tell her when it is the best time and, and place to reproduce. But in an environment like a hatchery, you know, it, it can be very crowded for the shrimp and oftentimes too stressful for her to make eggs. And so to solve this problem, wait for it, um, we cut out her eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Despite
Despite all its benefits, captive breeding comes with various consequences. Whether it's the eye cutting or massive disease outbreaks or contaminated water, these are all results of intensive farming. It's not just in agriculture where animals are crammed together, but also in agriculture where the same kinds of crops are grown together and fed a lot of chemicals to help them survive, killing a lot of our biodiversity and also harming our health. While we recognize that some of the practices used to breed shrimp in captivity are sometimes brutal, PK's farm does give us an idea of some ways to become more sustainable in our practices. She employs a closed loop system, which means that everything that starts on the farm stays on the farm. And the mangroves that she planted filters the wastewater so that byproducts like nitrogen and phosphorus don't end up in our rivers and in our oceans. After a long tour around the hatchery, we finally said thank you and goodbye to Pikai and wished her the best. Yay! We found where shrimp are born now. Uh, where is that all that sea and slavery they're talking about? A lot of the feed for the shrimp comes from um, using seafood mm -hmm. and often when this is caught by the big trawlers in Thailand and elsewhere it comes to a product called trash fish and basically trash fish is all of the detritus all of the fish that's been mushed up in the back of the net um, that you can't eat. A couple of years ago they started using trash fish as a good source of protein to produce aqua feeds, poultry feeds, um, pork feeds as well. So going back again to those trash fish boats. So these boats, they didn't always catch trash fish. Before, maybe in the 1960s, 1970s, these boats would have been catching um, large seafood, economically viable species for serving on people's plates to actually feed people. But because Thailand invested very heavily in its fishing fleet, there were too many boats catching too few fish and eventually you run out of the large fish, you have to start catching the smaller fish, and then eventually even the smallest fish. It means that you're having to use bigger nets, uh, smaller mesh size on the nets as well, so that you can catch more of the stuff that you're, you're going through, um, and also use more boats. So we saw the use of pair trawlers, where you have two boats, um, maybe a kilo apart, and they attach a net between them. So you're taking this massive net through these um, very productive um, fishing grounds um, and just hoovering everything and anything that's there. I think the key thing about farm shrimp is that it's a very intensive, usually a very intensive process that has a lot of inputs and usually your output that you get out is, uh, is considerably less than what you put in. Um, so in that process you go from six tons of perfectly good seafood that if had been allowed to grow to maturity could have actually sustained someone. Um, and then coupled to this, you have the human rights aspect as well. So a lot of these boats, they used to be crewed by Thai workers, but increasingly as the boats were fishing for longer, they were fishing further from shore, so maybe going for, to sea for months at a time. Um, increasingly Thai workers didn't want to work on the boats anymore. And so they had to approach migrant workers who were willing to take these jobs, they were willing to be paid less as well than their Thai counterparts, um, and also there's um, an element that they were being preyed on in the very early stages as well, because they're, they're new to Thailand, they don't speak the language, they don't have proper um, registration, um, they don't know what the minimum wage is, so they were easy prey for unscrupulous vessel operators. And in that scenario, you can very quickly spiral into a forced labor um, situation. Um, so that really is the environmental crisis that we're dealing with. And everyone says that we should be moving more towards farm shrimp because then it's less uh, likely to have come from illegal fishing. But it's fueling this overfishing pandemic that we've got at the moment. Now, 
There is no doubt that human rights abuses are still rife in the fishing industry, but in 2019, the EU did lift the yellow card on Thailand for illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing. However, <laughs> overfishing is just a whole different issue that needs to be addressed. In 2018, the Food and Agriculture Organization of the UN found that one third of global fish stocks are being fished at biologically unsustainable levels. And so the latest UN resolution on oceans, law at sea, and sustainable fisheries recognize the need for more ecosystem-based approaches to further study. They encourage coordination of law at sea, collaborative conservation, and sustainable use of marine biodiversity in international waters. Aquaculture has been a major supplement to commercial fishing, and it will continue to be that way as the world's taste for seafood grows. The FAO notes that progress is being made towards the sustainable development of aquaculture, but they highlight the need for successful, sustainable practices to be rapidly replicated if we are to maintain healthy ecosystems on land and at sea. You know, as, as we've seen going through this, this whole journey of finding out where, where shrimp came from, there's just so many people in one supply chain. It's called a supply chain for a reason. When we go to one farm, it's, it's not just going to that farm. We also see its impacts towards everything around it, you know, whether the, the natural environment or, or the communities living along them. If we want to protect the environments, we need to make sure that the people in that process are actually able to sustain themselves. There are so many stakeholders. Um, there are so many hands, so many communities, so many people touching this. And all these stakeholders are at varying levels of, of wealth, of power, of knowledge. You know, to me that really means that there needs to be more knowledge transfer, more collaboration. So, what do we do? <laughs> what do we do, Mac? <laughs> what do we do? <laughs> so lastly, after watching all of this, you may be thinking, so what the f*** do you want me to do? Here is my call to action song. Support organizations fighting for sustainable fisheries and marine and freshwater conservation. Demand better from seafood farms and fishing boats. There are many ways you can do this. For example, use social media to raise awareness about the environmental and social impacts of aquaculture and fisheries among your friends. Email seafood companies and pressure them to increase sustainable practices and transparency through things like less intensive fishing gear and vessel tracking technology. Protest and petition to urge the government to improve, enforce, and monitor regulation at sea and in farms. Hello? Um, I'm, I'm just wondering if you could do better? Oh, you're great! Thank you! You have a good day! Bye! Or, just call and ask nicely. Eat a more plant-based diet. Lastly, just ask where your seafood comes from. Just